Marker is a small feature in DaVinci Resolve, but it sure packs a punch. Now to set up a marker, the first thing you want to do is to locate a frame in the timeline where you want the marker to be set up. Now at this point, you can either leave it at the timeline level, which means no clips are selected, or you can choose to select the clip for that frame. This will allow you to place a marker on this particular clip. Now we're going to look at both scenarios, but for now, I'm going to leave it at the timeline level. So now let's just simply go ahead and locate the marker icon in the toolbar and then click on it. And this, as you can see, is going to set up a marker in the timeline. Now, if you look at that little arrow next to the icon, if you click on it, this will bring up a menu where you can remove this marker or choose different colors for this marker. Colors can be a great way to group markers or distinguish them from one another. Now notice once the marker is set up, you now have an overlay on the preview screen where it shows you the timestamp as well as the name of this marker. So now speaking of the name, what we can do is to double click on this marker. This is going to bring up a window where you can change the name for this marker and you can also put down additional notes here. So this is where I like to think of markers as sticky notes, either for yourself or for other editors where you can go, you know what? Hey, this is where I think certain edits needs to happen. This is where I think we need to do something about this frame uh, in the timeline. And once you're done, you can also change the color of this marker as well or remove it or just simply click on done. So now you have all these additional information that are available on the screen for yourself or for others to look at. And the icing on the cake is that you can come to this option menu at the bottom of the screen here and then turn on annotations. So now what this will allow you to do is to start to draw on the screen. So this really helps to kind of draw the viewer's attentions to certain areas of this frame. And once you're done, just make sure that you turn off annotations. So now all this information is going to be part of this marker. And again, it just really helps to draw the viewer's attention to certain areas of this frame where changes need to be made. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up another marker. But this time around, I want to set up this marker on the clip where this frame is located. Now, instead of clicking on the icon, I'm going to simply use the keyboard shortcut and key. So now this, as you can see, is going to go ahead and place a marker here for this clip. So the difference between a clip marker and timeline marker is that you just don't see this clip marker anywhere else on the timeline ruler or in the preview screen because this marker is native to this clip. OK, so now another way to go about this is to simply uh, press the M key twice. So now this is not only going to set up a marker, but also bring up that window we saw earlier where you can give it a different name, put down some notes, change the color. And once you're done, don't worry. While you don't see this marker anywhere in the preview screen, all the information that you just put down still will show up. Now, once you have multiple markers set up in the timeline, you can quickly navigate amongst these markers by holding down the shift and up and down key. So as you can see, this will allow you to quickly just jump back and forth amongst these markers. OK, now let's go ahead and set up another marker uh, quickly here in the timeline. I want to demonstrate another cool characteristic of markers, which is that it ripples by default. So if we go ahead and right now delete this clip to the left, you will see that this marker will continue to stay with this frame in the timeline. And this holds true even if, let's say, we put down a marker on a clip. So you will see that if we go ahead and delete this clip, it will still ripple. Now, in case, let's say, you don't want this behavior, you can turn it off by coming to the timeline menu here up top. And in the menu, if you uncheck ripple timeline markers, this will completely turn it off. But one thing to note about clip markers is that they do not move when we trim the clip. So now, as you can see, if we trim past these markers, this will just automatically remove these markers from this clip. Now, another cool thing about markers is that uh, they snap as long as you have snapping turned on. So now, as you can see, this marker is going to snap onto the beginning and end of another clip or any other clip in this timeline. This can be extremely helpful if you want to, let's say, line up this frame with another clip uh, or any clip uh, anywhere else in this timeline. And the best part is that uh, markers themselves will also snap onto each other. So if we try to line up this marker with, let's say, this blue marker right here, you will see a line running through them telling you that, hey, these markers are now lined up with one another. Now, lastly, 
you can move a marker to anywhere else in the timeline and well guess what it also snaps so as you can see this marker now will allow you to snap onto the beginning and end of another clip here it's just really helpful uh, if you want to precisely place it in another frame in the timeline Markers don't work with just timeline clips. They also work with source clips. So let's bring up a source clip here and we're going to just place a marker by hitting the M key or you can right click and then in the menu, go to add marker and choose a color for your marker and voila. Now a question you may have at this point is that, well, I don't see this anywhere else in the media pool. Okay, so what you wanna do is to switch to the list view. And then for this clip right here, you're gonna see a little arrow right next to it, allowing you to expand. So if we click on that, you're gonna see that now this is going to review the marker that we just placed, and it's going to show up underneath this clip. Now, another feature, another hidden feature about markers is something called duration marker, which is allowing you to basically place a marker for a range of a clip. But what you wanna do first is to place an in and out point. Now, once that is set up, what you want to do is to right click and then in the menu, we're going to choose convert in and out to duration marker. So now this is going to place a marker over a range of, of a clip. And once this is set up, you can simply just double click on it, change the name and put on some nodes, uh, change the color, just like what you would do with any other marker. But the best part is that because it's a range, so it covers uh, multiple frames uh, within a clip. And you can see that this will also show up in the media pool. Okay, so now I have placed all these markers. Where can I go to track all of them? So let's come to index here, click on that, and then this is going to bring up the edit index. And now if you click on the three dots here, this is going to bring up a menu. And then now let's go to show marker. So now as you can see, you can either choose all of them or a certain color of a marker. Let's go ahead and select all. So this is going to bring up all the markers that you have placed in the timeline. And as you click on them, this is going to allow you to uh, just go to that specific marker in the timeline. Or what you can do is to go to the markers tab. Now, as you can see, this is going to give you uh, just the bird's eye view also of all the markers that you have in the timeline. But the best part here is that it gives you a lot of details, the names of the marker, uh, you know, the color of the marker, as well as the notes that you have written for that marker. So this is a really good way just to get that bird's eye view and also keep track of all the markers that you have in the timeline. Okay, now let's switch gears a little bit by taking this clip to the Fusion page. And if we bring up the keyframe panel here, you're going to see that uh, this will allow us to see all the pre-existing markers that we have placed on this clip. But if you want to go ahead and place another timeline marker, what you can do is to come to the timeline ruler and then right click in the menu, select add marker. So now, as you can see, this will allow you to add a new marker here. And if we right click on it, you have a slew of options that you can use Let's just click on rename marker uh, for now and then just give it a different name. And once this is done, you're going to see that uh, this is going to be here on the Fusion page. And if we take it back to the edit page, it's also going to show up. So this is really good to know that uh, what you do on the Fusion page is also going to show up here on the edit page. Okay, now one other thing you can do is to bring up the spline editor and you can also add markers here as well to the timeline. So let's just right click on the timeline ruler, select add marker. And now you're going to see that uh, this marker is also going to show up in the keyframe panel as well. Okay, let's click on it and then you're going to see the slew of option here. We're just going to go to rename marker here, give it a different name. And now if we go back to the edit page, you're going to see that uh, once again, this is also going to show up on the edit page. Now, one thing I want to call out here is that if you have pre-existing marker like this red one here and you take it to the Fusion page, unfortunately, Fusion does not allow you to edit it. So that is something that you want to keep in mind. OK, now what about color page? OK, so let's go there and we're going to come to the preview screen. Let's click on the three dots there. And then in the menu, you can come to markers. This is going to review all the markers that you have placed on the timeline. And if you click on any of them, this is going to take you to that marker in the timeline. And now you can go ahead and do whatever color grading that you want to do based on the notes left here. And another thing you can do is to come to clips. Click on that, which is right next to media pool. This is going to give you a list of menu. Come to marked clips 
and then you can click on let's say blue markers this will just allow you to narrow down to only clips that have a blue marker or you can let's say select any marker this just will allow you to filter down to all the clips that have markers on them all right one last thing i want to touch on here is uh, that you can also set chapters uh, so what you want to do is to make sure that you select a distinct color for your marker here i'm going to place two pink markers and then now let's take them to the deliver page here under custom export let's make sure that uh, we select chapters from markers and then let's choose the color that we just used so in this case it's going to be pink now if we export this file right now you will see that in this file i can just come to the chapters here and then you're going to see the two chapters or the two markers that we just uh, placed in the timeline and then uh, this will just allow you to kind of quickly jump to that part of the file that part of the clip so it's another cool feature of markers okay guys i hope you learned a lot about markers from today's tutorial and as always i will see you next time